Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Harvinder Kaur. Today I have taken up this poem, the Lebanon top from the book Hornbill of class 11. This is a very short and sweet poem and uh, uh, I'm sure that you're going to enjoy it. The Lebanon top is written by Ted Hughes. It is pronounced as Hughes, not as Hughes or something else, as you pronounce H-U-E-S, Hughes. Ted Hughes. So in this poem, uh, the poet talks about a uh, tree, Lebanon tree. Uh, there's a bird also. Uh, it's called as goldfinch. And as you can see in the pictures I have put in my slide, there are two pictures of uh, the tree, Lebanon tree. Uh, you can make out that its uh, flowers are yellow in color. And the prominent color of this tree is yellow. So let's read the first stanza. The first stanza is like this the Lebanon top is silent quite still in the afternoon yellow September sunlight a few leaves yellowing all its seeds fallen so in the very beginning of the poem the poet tells us that the Lebanon tree is silent why because it is the afternoon time and uh, uh, moreover it is autumn season and there is quietness all around, there is silence all around, and the tree is also very, very silent. So the Lebanon clock refers to the tree, the Lebanon tree. It is quite still. Still is what? Motionless. So there is no movement uh, on this tree. And what time of the day it is? It is the afternoon. In the afternoon, yellow September sunlight. The month of the year is September. As since it is afternoon, so obviously uh, there is a lot of sunlight also. A few leaves yellowing. Now since it is the autumn season, as you, are, as you are aware, that in autumn season the leaves turn yellow, the seeds fall down. So in the same with the prominent color of uh, uh, the ambience is yellowish. So the leaves have turned yellow and all its seeds fall. So let's read uh, or let's see the poetic devices used in uh, stanza one. Uh, alliteration is used. Sometimes you are asked in the questions like uh, which poetic device is used in the stanza. So in the first stanza, alliteration is used. Now what is alliteration? You must uh, know that it is a repetition of the same sound words. When the same sound is repeated, the consonant sound is repeated, then it's called uh, alliteration. As uh, I have written here, September sunlight. So, so sound is being repeated. September's so sound and sunlight so sound. So, uh, both these uh, consonant uh, sounds are put together and that is why alliteration is used here. Now, based on the first stanza, there are a few questions which I have uh, uh, put for you. Let's see whether you are able to uh, do these or not. Anyway, I'm going to explain it to you. The first question is, name the poem and the poet you just read. It is The Lebanon Top by, is it Sylvia Plath, Ted Hughes, Robert Frost, or William Wordsworth? Yes, it is Ted Hughes. Now the next question is, which season of the year it is? Is it autumn season? Is it summer season? Is it winters? Or it is rainy season? The answer is it is autumn season. Another question. What has happened to the leaves and seeds? So we have got four options as answer. The first one is leaves have turned green and all its seeds have germinated. Leaves have turned beautiful and attractive. Leaves have turned yellow and all its seeds have fallen. And the fourth option is only seeds have fallen. So which one you think is the correct one? Yes, it is the C option. Leaves have turned yellow and all its seeds have fallen. The next question is, which poetic device is used in September sunlight? Is it metaphor, personification, simile, or alliteration? So 
I just told you when the same consonant sound is repeated, then it is alliteration. So, uh, so our answer is the D option, alliteration. Let's move on to the second stanza. It goes like this. Till the goldfinch comes, the twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement, at a branch end. Then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness and the machine starts up of chitterings and a tremor of wings and trillings. The whole tree trembles and trills. So let's see the difficult word meanings uh, used in the stanza. You must not be aware of the word goldfinch. So I have put a picture before you. Uh, you can see that it is also yellow in color. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, bird with yellow feathers. It's a small singing bird with yellow feathers on its wings. Twitching. What does the word twitching mean? It means sudden jerk movement. Chirrup. That is sound made by the birds or a bird making repeated high pitched sound. Next one is startlement. You get startled. So what does the word mean? It means feeling or showing sudden shock. Like as if uh, you are immersed in some work, you are totally engrossed in some work and somebody just calls you from behind, then you will be startled. You will be in a state of shock for a few seconds. That is startlement. The next word is abrupt. Abrupt, abrupt means sudden or rapid. The next word is chitterings. Uh, it is again a sound uh, made by the words or uh, uh, unrecognizable sound, you can say. The next phrase is tremor of wings. Tremor is shaking. And when you say tremor of wings, wings, it means shaking of wings. So involuntary shaking of the wings is tremor of wings. Trillings is again to produce a chirping sound. Again, it refers to the sound. Trembles is to shake. So, uh, when like you have your uh, report card before you, so if the marks are not very good, so you tremble in front of your parents. So, that is trembling, that is shaking. Thrills, a sudden feeling of excitement. You are thrilled. And when the score is really good, you are thrilled. You, you are thrilled to show your report card to your parents. Now let's see the first two lines. Uh, Till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end. So the bird, uh, goldfinch, it comes and perches on the tree. And where does it sit? It sits at the branch end. As you can see in the picture, it is sitting at the edge. It is sitting at uh, the end of the branch. And how does it come? It comes with a chirping sound. Of course, the, tree, uh, the bird has come home and it is very excited. So, it's making chirping sound. And how does it come? It comes suddenly. Uh, the movement of the bird, if you have observed, it's very sudden. It has come suddenly and a startlement uh, because you were not expecting it and all of a sudden it's there. So, it's a startlement and it perches at the branch end. She enters the thickness. Now, uh, from the branch end, the bird goes inside the thickness of the leaves, inside the thickness of the tree. So, she enters the thickness. As you can see in the picture, she has entered from the branch end to the thickness of the tree where her nest is. And a machine starts up of chitterings and a tremor of wings and fillings. Since she has brought some food for uh, its young ones, so... Uh, it's kind of like the machine has started of chitterings and tremor of things. The, the kids, the, not the kids, the young ones are very, very excited to see their mother. So they are making a lot of noise. There is a lot of chittering, a lot of chirping in the air. And they are shaking their wings in excitement. And trilling is again, I told you, it's a high pitched sound. So uh, one thing to notice here, the poet has used the word machine. 
so as you start a machine uh, then when it uh, when it comes to life all of a sudden there is movement there is noise uh, the machine starts up in the same with a silent tree which was hitherto very very silent uh, all of a sudden it comes into uh, action there is a lot of action going on there on the tree uh, there is a lot of noise there is a lot of movement of the bird and its young ones and the poet uh, says as if a machine has been started and then the poet says and a tremor of wings and thrillings the whole tree trembles and thrills so with the arrival of the goldfinch bird there is a lot of movement there is a lot of noise and uh, there is a lot of thrillings chitterings chirping so there is excitement and thrill all around earlier in the beginning of the poem uh, the tree was very very silent it was still but with the arrival of the bird the scenario has changed now there is lot of motion there is lot of uh, noise all around the tree has come to life it is the engine of her family she stokes it full then flirts out to a branch end showing her part face identity mask as you can see in the picture before you uh, there are two pictures to stoke means to add fuel as you add fuel to a vehicle or add as you put uh, fuel in a vehicle uh, the machinery starts uh, you fill it up in the same way uh, the bird goldfinch it feeds its young ones it uh fills their bellies it fills their stomach so she is stoking her young ones with food as you stoke uh, a car or a bike uh, with fuel in the same way she is also uh, feeding her young ones she has brought some food with her and she is feeding her young ones it is the engine of her family now what is the engine of a family again the poet is comparing uh, the nest or the bird and its young ones with the engine the poet wants to say that the tree is or the nest is a kind of engine the engine is lifeless unless until you put fuel into it unless until you start it there is no noise there is no motion uh, there is no movement uh, so uh, when you uh, stoke it when you add fuel then the engine comes to life so the nest is the engine of the bird uh, the young ones live in that nest and she stokes it full she feeds the young ones then flirts are to branch in the way she had come to the thickness of the tree now she is going back in the same, similar manner uh from the thickness of the tree after feeding her young ones uh, she has come out of uh, the thickness of the uh, tree and now she is she is perched at the branch end branch end or she is sitting at the branch end showing her bird face identity mask now uh, if you see the bird uh, has some uh, peculiar characteristics like uh, it has some bars on its face some marks some stripes some lines these are the natural lines uh, or the natural bars so it is showing its bard face because she she has come out of the thickness of the tree now her face is visible and it seems as if uh, she is uh, hiding behind some branches uh, so that is why her face is bard so let's have a look at the poetic devices used in stanza 2 it is alliteration i just told you in the previous stanza when uh, there is a repetition of the same consonant sounds it is alliteration so where all alliteration was used in this stanza a suddenness a startlement again the sir sound is repeated so it is alliteration tree trembles the sound is repeated tree to tremble stuff so the sound is repeated so it is alliteration whistle chirrup whispering so the sound is repeated so it is alliteration which are the poetic devices used simile is used on the right hand side you can see uh, simile uh, it is like when you compare something with something it is simile you compare two things and you use the words as and like so uh, 
here uh, the movement of the bird goldfinch is compared with the movement of uh, the lizard somewhere uh, in the poem the poet compares uh, the movement of uh, the bird it says that it comes or it moves like uh, a lizard a lizard is sleek it is smooth it is uh, uh, shining it is uh, glossy in the same way the bird's movement is also compared to a lizard which other poetic device is used here metaphor metaphor is again comparison but you don't use the words as or like so we are all uh, uh, metaphor is used in the stanza a machine starts up of chitterings i told you when i was explaining i told you that the poet compares the, the tree with the machine so comparison is drawn so machine uh, in the word machine metaphor is used the next is the engine of her family the engine refers to the nest of the bird where her young ones lay uh, so the moment uh, the moment the bird comes and feeds its young ones it seems as if uh, an engine has been started there is lot of commotion there is lot of noise so engine is compared to the nest of the bird her barn face identity mask obviously again uh, the bars are the natural stripes on its body so uh, metaphor is used here which of the poetic device is used personification uh, when you attribute some human qualities to some inanimate object uh, then uh, it is personification so trembling like in this line tremble word is used and thrill is used so these are uh, some features of uh, or these are some uh, characteristics of human beings but we have attributed it to the tree so the tree does not tremble or it uh, does not show the feelings of thrill or fear and all this but then the poet has used it for the tree so when we see the whole tree trembles and thrills uh, we have personified it and transfer epithet uh, where transfer epithet is used for bard face identity mask now why uh, transfer epithet uh, I, i hope that you know the meaning of transfer epithet but in case if you don't know let me explain it to you transfer epithet is a poetic device where uh, an adjective is used before a noun and it modifies the meaning of the noun like here if you notice bard is an adjective face is a noun so we have used the um, use the word bard as an adjective before a noun face and it has modified the meaning of it uh, means only the face is not bard the entire body is bard so there are stripes on its body uh but we have uh, attributed this to only the face so it is transferred epithet so her bard face identity mask is uh poetic device used is for sort uh, sort of transferred epithet and the one is anamatopoeia now what is anamatopoeia it is uh, the usage of words which does not have any meaning but they denote some sound like if i say the book fell down with a thud so the word third denotes some sound if you see the dictionary it will again refer to sound only so anamatopoeia uh, is used where you are uh, referring to some sound like the jingling of bells so the jingling word uh, refers to the sound of the bells so it is anamatopoeia so where all anamatopoeia is used in this stanza it is used where the poet has used the words like cheer up chitterings trillings so these words refer to the sound so anamatopoeia now a few questions based on this extract what happens to the tree when the goldfinch comes the tree uh, the tree becomes silent and still the tree sheds its leaves and seeds the tree comes to life it becomes alive or the tree turns yellow so if you have read the stanza carefully if you have listened to the explanation carefully you would know that it is the c option the tree comes to life with the arrival of the goldfinch <clears throat> the seeds have fallen uh, we are told that the seeds have fallen and the leaves have turned yellow that is before the arrival of the uh, of the bird goldfinch but after its arrival uh, the tree comes to life it becomes active so the c option is the 
correct one. Now, who transforms the tree? Is it the goldfinch bird, the lizard, the bard face identity mask, or the engine? Who transforms uh, this silent looking tree uh, into uh, a very active and bubbling sort of thing? Who comes and all of a sudden uh, the atmosphere changes? It is a goldfinch bird. So, the first option or the A option is the correct one. The goldfinch bird transforms the tree. Next question is, which poetic device is used in then sleek as a lizard? If you notice, we have used uh, the word as and we have compared the movement of the bird with the movement of a lizard. So, we have done the comparison. And we have used the word as. So, uh, where we draw the uh, comparison and we use the words as and like, we say that it is a metaphor, a personification, a simile, or pun. It is simile. Simile is the correct option. Correct option or the correct answer. Now the next question is, what does machine refer to in the extract? Does the word machine refer to the sound made by the lizard? It refers to the tree being cut by a machine. It refers to the bird goldfinch. Or does it refer to the nest of the goldfinch? So machine refers to the nest of the goldfinch. So your answer is the D option. D option is the correct answer. It refers to the nest of the goldfinch. Because when the goldfinch comes, then only uh, there is commotion, there is noise, there is movement. So all of a sudden the machine starts, uh, starts up. So it is a nest. Why does the whole tree trembles and thrills? What is the reason? Why the tree trembles and trills, there is excitement, there is uh, movement, there is a lot of activity because the tree is afraid of the goldfinch tree uh, or goldfinch bird, sorry. There is excitement and joy, it is afraid of the lizard or there is sadness and fear. What is the reason of trees trembling and uh, thrill? It is because there is excitement and joy. Let's move on to the third stanza now. Then with airy, delicate whistle chair of whisperings, she launches away towards infinite and the Lebanon subsides to empty. You can see the difficult word meanings uh, written below. Airy is weird and strange. You have eerie feeling if you go to some desolate area if you go to the uh, heart of a forest then you may feel eerie subsides means diminishes to lessen in intensity launches here is to fly away take off fly away which are pretty devices are used in stanza uh, two it's again on an anamatopoeia where you have whistle, chirp, whispering. So whistle is again uh, is used for sound. So it is anamatopoeia. And the next one is imagery, uh, where the poet says it launch. She launches away. So launches away means uh, she flies away. Now uh, you must be sure uh, with uh, this poetic device imagery when a mental picture is drawn with the use of words. A mental picture is formed in your uh, mind frame then it is imagery she uh, the poet could have used she flies away but the poet has used launches away so you know that launches means take off it will go up only launches does not mean that it goes down huh? so it launches away means it flies away so imagery is used here so let's uh, look at some questions based on this stanza who does the word she refer to in the extract? Does the word she refer to the lizard, the Lebanon tree, the 
the goldfinch or the machine who we are talking about in the entire poem it is the goldfinch bird so she refers to the goldfinch where does she fly away does she fly away to the nest does she fly away to the thickness of the tree or to the infinite sky or to the top of the tree after uh, come after feeding her uh, young ones it comes and sits at the branch and and then she flies away somewhere where does she fly away she flies away to the infinite sky so the c option is the correct answer to the infinite sky which poetic device is used in she launches away is it personification metaphor simile or imagery so uh, if you look at the phrase launches she launches away you would know that uh, launches away forms a mental picture of uh, flying of the bird so it is imagery so d option is the correct answer now you have some home assignment and uh, uh, let me see whether you have understood the poem whether you have understood the poetic devices used in the poem so your homework is write the summary of the poem in your own words you have to write the summary and uh, if you have liked my video do like share and subscribe my channel and do pass it on to your friends as well they may benefit from the video thank you for watching and it was pleasure uh, presenting this uh, beautiful poem before you all thank you so much god bless you love you